Hi everybody, um, so today we're going to take a look at what's been going on in the global stock markets. Um, so in terms of size of the various markets, uh, the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ are the two largest uh, by far. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the Japanese market, uh, the Asian Chinese market, uh, Euronext here, London Stock Exchange, uh, Shenzhen, um, and a number of others that are uh, smaller as well, uh, but also very important. Uh, here's kind of a quick chart I just made up uh, showing the various sizes. So you can see North America is about 50%, a little bit less uh, than of the whole market. And then you can see the China and Hong Kong and Taiwan market here being a good uh, chunk, about 15%. Uh, Indian uh, Europe market being about 16%, Japan being about 7%, and everyone else being about 10%. Uh, so when I look at all the markets simultaneously, what I do is I do finance.com slash world indices up here and you can try that out and it'll get you to this page or you can go to the uh, world indices tab under finance.com and find it as well. Um, but here you can see all the major markets. They got uh, S&P 500, the Dow, NASDAQ, uh, NYSC, Composite and so on. And then you can see some of the foreign markets down in here. Um, and there's quite a number of them that you can look through. So it's pretty fun to see. Uh, now, when you click on any one of these, you'll get this chart here. So you click on, um, basically, I just clicked on this one here and it took me to here. Um, then you want to click on full screen to get to the full screen layout view. Uh, so what I did here is try to compare these different levels as we've been going down. So you can see. Um, certain points have been kind of critical here. Maybe this point here has also been pretty critical. Uh, so let me just draw a line horizontal. So right in here, you can see there's kind of a blip in here and a blip back there. So those kind of line up. You kind of put those in between those areas and kind of get the marker. Um, so we don't really know where we're going from here. Um, this has been pretty much down uh, for the past uh, ever since uh, pretty much the start of this year um, so it, it has been pretty bad there's been some ups but we weren't really sure what was going on and then some straight downs and then ups again straight down so basically we're anticipating some more of that as we kind of follow this uh, line along here uh, what we're gonna do now is gonna, gonna compare this uh, you know, S&P 500 to the others. So we kind of want to trace this back as we look at these other markets. So we're going to look at the Japanese market next. So down in here is the Japanese market. It's the Nikkei. So I'm going to open this up in a new tab and load that up for you. So again, we're going to compare this uh, North American market via all these others. So we're going to basically look at the Japanese one because it's almost similar to the Nasdaq. And we're going to kind of use that as a main guide here for Asia. So if you look at these two, it looks quite a bit different on this top part here. You can see um, that it was pretty much straight up and then straight down. Um, whereas in the Japanese market, we kind of fluttered at the top here a bit and then dropped here and then came back up. So we're looking at a pretty major drop as well, probably. Um, and the question is, will it go up again or down more? So um, you can also see it's pretty much similar to this point here, which is the tie, high point right at the coronavirus, um, before the pre-coronavirus, and then after that, it kind of launched up, so got pretty high there. So the interesting thing is if you look at this point here, which is the major kind of, then there's this dead area here where there wasn't much trading done at all. So. Looks like we could just drop all the way down to here um, if it misses this point in here, which it looks like another level of support. Uh, so one thing I noticed here is that the Japanese market hit its high um, before, and then kind of uh, before the uh, American market, um, but also it, it didn't hit as high. So you can see here, there's basically two highs here. There's this point here and this point here, and then a low down in here. So that low was around 8, 18. So meanwhile, you can see in here, it just is totally different. Um, but it does kind of give us an idea that basically 
based on this level, you can see it's coming back down here where this is the coronavirus peak, and you can see kind of at a point at a similar level right now, actually, somewhere. So Japan market is basically similar to the American market right now. Okay, next we're gonna look at the Shanghai Stock Exchange, which is S Shanghai Stock Exchange. And this is the ticker for it. So I'll just load it up here. Full screen. Uh, so one super interesting thing about the Shanghai Stock Exchange is that it's very much different than the rest of the world. Um, you can see that it's not as optimistic um, and is more, in some ways, volatile. So um, you can see that you know the the crash uh, from coronavirus. So you look at here. This is the coronavirus crash happened right here. So it's basically 2000, early 2000. The low in uh, three of uh, 2020, right? So if you go to three of 2020, you can see it's right in here. So the coronavirus crash looks like it's actually before that when it's actually not. So it actually had a lower low right before that um, from COVID, um, not from COVID, but uh, something else. So I uh, mean, you can see that basically it took off really quickly once it dropped it almost was like not even noticeable which is kind of really strange in my opinion um, so you can see a couple interesting levels here first of all you got this level down in here uh, which is kind of a low kind of a major peaking point uh, and then all the way up here you can see another point right in that area um, now for some reason the volume drops off if I shift it this way so I'm not sure what there's what the bug is there but you can basically see um, basically this is where we're at right in here right now so if you see the current level is right in here so this is a lot more difficult to understand what's going on but you can see that there's kind of like a two levels there's this upper level here and a lower level here and we're kind of heading back up into an upper level so we're going up in the uh, Asian market, whereas we're going down in the uh, American market, um, with the exception of Japan. So we'll take a look at India as well and see what's going on with that. Um, so let me go back to India and see. Um, and you can see uh, there's also the Shenzhen. So maybe before we check out India, so basically you can see the Hong Kong Stock Exchange is also huge in Euronext. Um, but I'm going to jump right in here to look at the Bombay Stock Exchange. Uh, and it's called the uh, Bombay Stock Exchange right here. So, pull that up in a new tab. We'll just see what's going on. So, interestingly, with the Bombay Stock Exchange, we see it pretty much mirroring the American Stock Exchange, except for maybe going out a little bit higher and not as far down yet. So, Basically, um, that should be a concern for Bombay, and you can see maybe they might trail down to here, um, but it's really hard to say, um, at least if they're going to go along with the American stock exchange is already on. Uh, so next I'm going to do the FTSE 100. This is the London Stock Exchange. Um, you can see that they've had a... So interestingly, uh, they're very conservative compared to the American economy, right? So you can see that they really dropped hard, and then they didn't really come back, and they're still kind of at a level down in here. So if you take that level, um, which we can draw a line here, let's draw a horizontal line. Let's see, so we basically have a level right in here for trading, and then a peak up in here. We didn't even go above the level that we saw here in you know the American economy went way way up. So uh, it's interesting to see that we can maybe trace this down to here, and then bring this one back almost even to in this area here. So that's pretty much where we're heading uh, to link us back up with the uh, 
let's see. Um, so, so I'm just going to show one more case here of the uh, Euro Next uh, 100, um, and then we can kind of close out with that. So you can see here that the Euronext has definitely gone up a lot more. It hasn't gone up as much as the S&P 500, but then it dropped down here to a lower point just below that peak from here, and that's where we're at right now. So kind of some support to dropping even in the American economy um, if they're going to link up with the other ones. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little discussion on the global markets. Um, so we looked at quite a number of New York Stock Exchange with the, and the NASDAQ with the S&P 500, Japan, we looked at Shanghai, here are next, we looked at the London Stock Exchange, and we looked at the Bombay Stock Exchange here. Um, we can look, look at the DAX and some other ones. Basically, we covered quite a number of different uh, stock exchanges. Hope this has helped you. Uh, let me know what you think. Please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe and I'll try to get back to you. If you have any questions, we can chat. See you.